Hello, everybody, and welcome to WASD20 Live. We are here for our first session of the Icewind Dale campaign. Icewind Dale, rhyme or reason. I am joined by some very good friends of mine. We have uh, my buddy Will, Ryan, and Alex, all good friends of mine. And we are missing one player tonight. You may notice a blank slot here. Uh, Michael um, from Dead Aussie Gamer is going to be joining us as well, but he had a crazy situation at work late last night that, um, uh, well, he, that means he can't be here today. So uh, we will be working him into session two, uh, but we're going to play. And, I, you know, I told these guys, well, this might mean a TPK because everything I had planned was for four players, but that's okay. You can roll up new characters next week, right? <laughs> right, guys? That's so much work in there. Of course. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. Well, if people could just verify um, that our audio is working, can everyone hear us okay? Let, let us know if there's any issues. Uh, I haven't done a live game in so long that there are just bound to be some kinks, okay? Um, so, yeah, I apologize for that in advance. It's just going to happen. Um, I'm also realizing, <clears throat> uh, well, no, yeah, I think we're good. I'm going to um, let these guys introduce themselves more a little bit during our break today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and we're just going to jump into playing right now, and you'll get to know their characters. And then uh, we'll, we'll take a break about halfway through, shooting for about three hours tonight. And uh, then they can uh, just introduce themselves a little bit, too. So, you guys ready? I am. It is time. Be. All right. <laughs> cool. Here we go. Icewind Dale has become trapped in a perpetual winter. Ferocious blizzards make the mountain pass through the spine of the world exceedingly treacherous. And this land has not felt the warmth of the sun in over two years. In fact, the sun no longer appears above the mountains, not even in what should be the height of summer. In this frozen tundra, darkness and bitter cold reign as king and queen. <clears throat> Most Dale residents blame Aurel, the Frost Maiden, the god of winter's wrath. The shimmering aurora that waves across the sky each night is said to be her doing. A potent spell that keeps the sun at bay. Dale folk live in a scattering of settlements known as Ten Towns. You can see the map down below me. The drop-off in caravans coming from the south and travel between settlements in this never-ending winter has left everyone feeling isolated. Although each town has resolved to appease the Frost Maiden with sacrifices of one kind or another, no respite from winter's fury seems forthcoming. For adventurers such as yourselves, Ten Towns is a place to test one's mettle, and in the spirit of heroes who have come before, leave one's mark on the frigid, blighted land. Our party finds themselves walking through thick snow. Visibility is barely there. Coming from parts of Ten Towns to the smaller town of Bremen, our party makes their way you can see the, uh, the buildings that mark your, uh, your nearing your destination at last through this frigid, cold, arctic weather. And we see our, our characters approaching and walking up to the buildings. Hoods drawn as they approach uh, the local inn. Uh, hoods may be, there we go. <laughs> Hoods may be removed, perhaps. <laughs> um, and first we see um, a short, stout character. Alex, would you describe your character for us? Yes, I'm going to unhood for this. <laughs> uh, we see a, as you said, short, stocky character. And uh, he's wearing a uh, fuzzy, furry wool hat. Um, uh, over his eyes is a piece of caribou, caribou bone. It's been shaved down flat and has a little slit in it to keep uh, additional sunlight out. 
but since it's uh, so blizzardy, he just lifts it up and you can see his eyes are pale white. He's got a big uh, bushy beard and uh, a heavy woolen cloak. Hmm. Cool. And uh, Will, would you describe your character? His wig is a goblin and he tries to hide that he's a goblin, walks like a halfling. He's got a black hood and a dark red, almost kind of dirty mask over, so he can kind of hide that goblin effect. He's got some leather armor on. It's a light tan leather with white fur trim around some of the edges because he's in a very cold place. He also has a black cloak with a white in interior so if he needs to hide in the snow or maybe look like a rock he can kind of just crumple up and look like part of the environment he has a black leather uh, pants and a dark leather belt with a pretty nice belt buckle on it looks like it's maybe got a few gems on it um, some gold hmm. and he's a goblin an effective rogue perhaps with a uh... Sticky fingers. <laughs> a warm one. <laughs> cool. And towering over our two smallish friends, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, describe your character. All right. Clay is a water genasi barbarian uh, who has migrated here. Um, his once sky blue skin has turned a paler icy blue. Um, his short warrior uh, alabaster white hair has grown out long since he's been here, in part to help insulate his body from the cold, but also because uh, he just doesn't care about about what he looks like. He's, he's here for other reasons. Um, he wears thick wool or animal hide coat. Um, with some thin, thinner leather um, shoulder armor, um, also insulated with fur. Um, he carries two hand axes um, that are always ready to be used. Um, and he has outfitted himself uh, to do what he needs to do in this cold climate. Excellent. All right, thank you all. Um... Go ahead and take everyone take a point of inspiration for those vivid descriptions. Thank you. Um, we are going to um, we've got a little bit of a late start, so I'm going to kind of adjust things a little bit here because I do want to try to finish by 11. Um, I, I can't miss my bedtime. Uh, <laughs> what do you guys think you would do as you are entering um, the town? I guess we'd look around for the closest inn or you know, place that we could find uh, a little break from this cold that we've been in. My my hands are so cold. I can't feel a single thing on my fingers. I, I swear <laughs> I've lost all feeling. I must get out of this cold. I must. we got to find some air and some nice warm rooms now. A figure leaning Anything against that'll... a building nearby <laughs> kind of gives, you, gives an odd look from underneath a, a snow-crusted hood. Strange voice. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that'll cease your complaining, rat. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, Drukbar would keep an eye out for any um, gilsman. He's, uh, he works as a smith, uh, and so he'd keep an eye out for any, um, any smiths like himself that maybe he could talk to and, um, for, for uh, information or for perhaps... Um, uh, a, a cheap place to stay if, if that's available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, by way of inns in, uh, you know, maybe for, as a first stop here, um, the uh, Bremen is, is a smallish town. I put the map down there and um, a population of about 150. So not a real big town. And as you can see, it is on the Shangarn River which I, I always just want to call Shangri-La or something because, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> Shangarn, I think maybe. And, um, and opening up into Mer Dwaldon, which is a larger lake. Um, the lakes in Icewind Dale, surprisingly perhaps, 
are still have some water that is not frozen over. And they are, um, you know, thank goodness, one of the only sources of food uh, for many people in Icewind Dale, uh, the knucklehead trout. And desperate as you are for work, um, you guys make your way to the local inn, just trying to find something. These are hard times. Uh, perhaps you seek adventure, but adventure is hard to come by when everyone's just huddled around their fires. There's sometimes, you know, people don't even get out enough to, to be able to find it. And so you all uh, stumble in, and we'll let me look at the, the inns here, since you said um, that might I'm be a good so idea. Cold. I just need some, some ale. Shut up. All right. I'm so sick of him, sick of listening to his bickering. I just need my own room, too. You guys can see on the map a, um, a, uh, place called Five, uh, Tavern Center. Indeed, there are five taverns. Um, as, uh, now, which of you might be from Ten Towns? Do you think you might have been to Bremen before? Yeah, I probably would have in my travels trying to keep some money flowing in, um, looking for odd jobs here and there. I'd have traveled all over. Okay. His big uh, de definitely has. He's from East Haven. And mm -hmm. I also know Cly to an extent with a, I gave him some information on a job and it turned can't out. can't pronounce my name right. Clay, see, silly goblin. Yeah, he's <laughs> Fiswick has, he's he's yeah, he's he's not the most reliable, but you know he he comes through and he comes through. You could just know that something he's telling you is probably embellished a little bit, mm -hmm. or maybe there's a few details that have been left out. So so he maybe he knows Bremen like the back of his hand. He tells his yeah. companions, <laughs> and he's a goblin. He's a local folk hero. He he did a good deed. Uh, the won't go talked about right now and it, it got him the status of being accepted he's a he's above a street urchin you know he's he's not Early. a holy person but mm -hmm. and you know he might have given this gentleman a job and <sighs> it didn't work out as intended so uh he he might give other people jobs as well so he's he's known Possibly as an information broker, not necessarily to the lower class and upper class, but he's on the street a lot. So he hears things and. Yeah. Good, good. Okay. So, so Fizzwick gets around a little bit. Right. And you might have some friends that might have some animosity still towards him on a few of those jobs. Fair enough. Yeah. Clay. All right. Um, Clay, for example, perhaps maybe. You still owe me. <laughs> Looks truck like bars from uh, Bryn Shander. That's where uh, that's the shop where he works out of is in Bryn Shander, but okay. uh, has traveled to a number of the ten towns before. Mm -hmm. And Clay, you said you were a little bit newer to ten towns, but been around for. I mean, yeah, years. I would think. Okay. Yeah. I Not... mean, I've definitely made this my territory, or yep. you know, I wouldn't say home, but this is where I'm staying. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Okay. Good to know. So you all would probably be somewhat familiar with Bremen. Um, you know, given the winter, um, the everlasting winter, you probably have not traveled a whole lot because, you know, it's to be avoided and, and people are sticking closer to home these last couple years. But um, we'll assume you have some familiar familiarity with it and can uh, stumble your way to uh, Tavern or, uh, sorry, I forgot the name already. Five Tavern Center. There we go. Um, so, and there are indeed uh, five taverns. Um, and most of them are pretty run down in a, si in a town the size of uh, 150 people. You can imagine that it might be hard to sustain five taverns. Um, and they all compete for customers and, um, you know, are just trying to one-up each other price gouging and and you know a lot of kind of dirty tactics it all started because of a 
family feud, actually. As the story goes, it was five brothers who uh, originally intended to build one tavern together, and the deal fell apart. Anyway, uh, there are five taverns, one called Stone's Even Keel, uh, The River's Mouth, Grumpy Moose, and The Black Bearded Brother. <laughs> so, any of those catch your fancy, gentlemen? I want to go to that Black Bearded Brother. <laughs> Where's the beer? Gots to hit that. Okay. I want to see the Black Bearded Brother. <laughs> Sounds like it's got the L's that I need. All right. So you all walk in, and uh, it's pretty sparsely populated. It's about, uh, we'll say, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. and <clears throat> But there is some level of warmth fr uh, from the cold. Certainly, you can still feel that wind going right through the siding of this place when a good gust comes by. Uh, but you walk in, and there is a fire, at least, and some measure of wall. Um, guys would like to find a table, perhaps? Absolutely. Guys, let's, do let's it. go over here by the fire. I must warm up a little bit. Okay. To go find the table that's as far away from Fizzwick as possible. <laughs> All right. Fizzwick by the fire. Clay at a table. Dr Drukvar? I'll join Clay. Okay. Good choice. A, um, spry little halfling... Uh, kind of makes his way over to you, carrying a, a plate of food to another customer, drops it off. Uh, this customer, a dwarf with a red beard, digs right into the food, and then the, the little halfling comes over to you and says, uh, what'll it be? What sort of ale do you have? Uh, yep, I'm having a little problem. You're, I can't hear you over there by the fire. <laughs> giving you crap sorry <laughs> um, wait, wait which which sorry which table did you go to who are you who are you serving first well, clay, you cl oh he went to clay and drew Kvar's table sorry nice i should have specified that my bad <laughs> <laughs> what sort of ale do you have well we have uh some uh red dwarven ale and we have also a little bit of uh well uh it's, never mind, it's no good. It tastes like piss. What'll it be? I'll take the piss. All right, coming right up. And for you, sir? As will I. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it, it is cheaper and times are tough. Um, <clears throat> so he brings out um, two cups of ale and then uh, goes over to... He, act he actually has an extra one and uh, saw Fizwick over there and says, Would you like one too? Just kind of nod. You see him just kind of nod a little bit. All right. Make Excellent. sure he pays you for it. <laughs> yep. So he says that'll be two copper a piece. Okay. You all pay up. Yep. yep. All right. And <clears throat> let me know if you need anything else. And he goes back and um, busies himself behind the bar. Now, <clears throat> the uh, red-bearded dwarf you saw um, seems to be in a bit of an argument with a, a new fellow who just walked in. And uh, it sounds like, that price is crap. I'm not paying that. No way. And he kind of slams his fist on the table. And this uh, larger human uh, with a um, just a, a short blonde beard says, uh, I hate dealing with you. If I weren't so desperate, ah. and the, and he um, kind of gets up and says, "You know what? You catch your own damn fish." And he walks out, storming out. I'm gonna go out and see if I can find something else. Slams the door, and the dwarf just quaffs this mug of ale, slams it down on the table, and says, "Bring me another." His eyes rest on you, you all. He says, You lot looking for work? Oh, we sure are. Indeed we are. Hmm. This one will bring you some coin. 
not much fame or glory. By the looks of this little scallywag here, he might be a bit of a hero wannabe. But and he points at Fizwick. <laughs> well, runt knows a runt. Uh, whatever. Can you? Do you think you can catch some fish? Again, not glorious work, but it pays. Well, the question is, do you have the equipment we can use? I have two rowboats, fine and ready to go. The rod, the reel? Yep, all that, the tackle, everything, all in the boats, well equipped. Wait, 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 wait a second. You just, wait, hang on a second. You just want us to go out and catch some fish. There has to be more to this. Where do you want to get, where what? do you want us to get this fish from? Like, it, there's, you're leaving some details out. I just know this. Well, the knucklehead trout are <laughs> no easy task. One pulled me in the water just two days ago. So, uh, you lot look like you can handle yourselves, handle some trouble. And there's some ruffians out on the, there on the lake, too, so, you know. Clay slams the rest of his beer and sets it on the table and says, I'm in. All right. Well, I owe him, so if he's in, I'm in. <laughs> it's about time you admitted it. <laughs> so I'm coming along for the ride. Good, good. All right. Association. He um he gets his uh, mug of ale and he says, "Now, uh, let's see. Uh, sorry, just a second here. Um, I'm trying to find how much he's gonna pay you guys. I know it's <laughs> I know it's crap because oh, it's Icewind Dale. Sure, let's just do this, guys. Like... <laughs> <laughs> That'll be one copper per fish. No, uh, I think it's not much more than that, though. Let me see here. Sorry. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not seeing the... I guess if I, I can use command... Uh, c control F here in, in the beauty of uh, Google Chrome here. What if we just... What if we make a request, guys? Sure, What if yeah. we just say... Well, if we give them our standard rate for fish catching. <laughs> I like this idea. This what do you think? Well, first of all, what kind of what kind of coin do you guys? Well, I guess you probably you may, maybe don't want to tell me how much coin you have on you at the moment. I mean, what what you, what our goals are here? You're right. I don't want to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the same boat. Okay. Well, I work for what comes my way. You got to start if somewhere. He's, if he's gonna pay us. Might as well do it. Mm -hmm. Don't have anything better to do. How does um, three copper per fish sound? I Sounds think four epic. is more like it. Sounds four. like we need to catch a lot of fish. Can you manage four? Four I can do. Four I can do. Got a deal. How many do you want total? As Which... many as you can get. What's, are... your wild, what's your wildest dreams in terms of knucklehead trout? Fill the boats. Just make sure you knock them out real good. All oh, right. Like fish. <laughs> <laughs> Heard that before somewhere. Hmm. Where will we find Can these boats? Copyright trouble here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't think that can happen. <laughs> no. no. Coney's and no, taters? No. <laughs> what, 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 else, what else can we rip off? <laughs> All right, four Clay, copper. Clay per stands up and starts walking toward the door. Okay. Um, as you're walking, behind. Um, the uh, the dwarf kind of heads over to to the loo, and um, you know, basically a, a barrel in the corner, and um, uh, an elf. <laughs> uh, uh, with blonde hair sitting in the corner actually says, Psst, this way. Going out fishing. Sure. Yes, something. Evidently. Yeah. Well, I would, um, I would be careful. Um, there's uh, been a sort of a creature of some kind. Well, I, knew out there. I told you, I told everyone here. I knew Six cents this one, little one has here. Smart one. 
Um, listen, just be careful out there. In fact, um, I, I'd be curious, and I'd, I'd actually pay you if uh, you could get me some more information about this monster. Um, kind of information. Well, perhaps some, just some notes of some kind. And he, she pulls out a, uh, a notebook and um, just a little kind of parchmenty thing, bundle of papers tied together with a little twine and a little piece of uh, kind of this waxy um, uh, black charcoal crayon of sorts. It says, any information, just write it down. If you can, if you can see it, you could even draw a picture. I'm just, I'm a researcher, you see. Come to Icewind Dale to explore some of the uh, flora, fauna, and, uh, well, more of one than the other, really, I guess, these days. But um, be very curious if there's uh, any information. Just remember, be careful. I'd hate to see uh, another crew, you know, fall victim to whatever's out there. What's your name, friend? Tally. Yeah. And, and, and what have you heard so far? Well, n nothing really. Um, it's just, there's been some boats gone missing and um, seen some strange things. Uh, look carefully at uh, the boats that uh, good old Grinsk uh, gives you. You might see a, a, a mark or two tells you the uh a clue about the monster i wouldn't be surprised oh this is perfect guys we can double dip we can we can go out and get his fish and then we can take yeah and then we can feed you to the uh, monster draw photographs i mean <laughs> just don't exist <laughs> i don't have much copper but i have some some goods uh some items that might be of interest to you and i'll see what we can work out if you depending on what information you can bring me all right, well, we'll follow up with you later. All right. And um, Grinsk comes out, turns around and goes, Oh, no, not you. Stop talking to my workers. I mean, my, my, my friends, uh, the fishers. Just leave them alone. And Tally just shakes her head calmly and says, Grinsk, I just couldn't stay silent and watch another crew fall victim to that whatever's out there on... Mayor Dwaldun. Hey, and man. he kind of just storms off. Uh, You're just going to send us out there looking for fish and you know there's a giant sea monster out there? There's nothing out there. Oh, She's no, dreaming. Smack. Smack. Still, there's something to be said for full disclosure. I just well, glare. I don't care much about Fizzwick. <laughs> you know, I, the, that's the old me. I was not <laughs> under the right judgment. <laughs> Uh, um, so, uh, Grinsk just storms off the dwarf. He just, he just storms off. He's headed out to the docks. Um, anything else you guys would like to do in here uh, before you join him at the docks? Can I get a blanket? Absolutely. Um, so, um, there is actually a, um, a, um, let's see. I think there's the store buried treasures let's see what's up with buried treasures sounds like a nice place but i told you guys i told you i told you never out there looking for spooky fish and sea mouths to come out with us out there with fish <laughs> okay locations in bremen what's got a hold of you fizzwig oh that's really how it would have ended up for us if we had listened to this guy we would have been out there <laughs> Fish while they were fishing. I see. Uh, there is. To me, I told you, this is starting out, going out here and catch fish. There's more to this. <laughs> there is no, um, like, real shop per se in um, this town, but you do notice across the street, if you were to walk out, that one of the uh, five taverns does have a um uh, like a window that opens once in a while and someone walks by and seems to be buying something would you like to go check it out oh yeah okay 
So yeah, you guys walk across the uh, the square here, uh, the center, and uh, over to uh, a small building that just seems to have in like green faded peeling paint slapped on the side of it sloppily, even keel written on the side. And um, the window is closed. Um, but you can hear someone behind, you know, it's just a board basically that slides up and down. Um, it's not even a glass window, just a board that slides up and down. <laughs> and uh, you can hear some talking in there and you can see, um, you know, some light inside. I I'd just bang, I'd like, bang on it with my fist. <laughs> and I'm going to wait outside. I, I left, I gave Clay a note, just I wanted a blanket and I gave him the money. Okay. I just try not to go inside. I don't want to piss anybody off. Yeah. And this one, you know, it's, it's, it's a walk up window. It's not even a, uh, you don't have to go inside. Oh. So clay bangs the window or the, the, the board, I guess. And it slides open and, uh, you see a portly woman inside and she says, what'll it be? How high up is this window? Is it like, it's to me like, I would say Fizwick could probably barely reach it with his hand. I grab him by the back of his coat and lift him up. <laughs> Tell her what you want. I really like the blanket, please. Set him down. Blanket. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, will blanket. Uh, that will be, uh, let's see, um, five silver. You give her five silver pieces? All right. Make sure you're, make sure you're keeping track of your money here. I'm not doing it for you. <laughs> Write that down. Um, I'm picturing one green finger just sliding one piece. Silver. <laughs> yeah, she kind of gives a funny look like, huh, funny looking fella. And, you know, hands you the blanket and she's kind of like just staring at you. Um. <laughs> kind of tucks his, 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 uh, hanker, not handkerchief. This is this, his, uh, face mask, mask a little yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah. Hide a little bit. Cool. All right. And, um, Good. So she, yep. Blanket, blanket achieved. Anything else you guys would like to do here? Um, you wouldn't happen to have any healing potions, would you? Huh. No, not here. Gotta ask. You yep. always gotta ask. Figure. You guys looking for some uh some kind of trouble or something what's uh healing potions <laughs> oh no 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 just... we needed a blanket and some healing potions always gotta be prepared yeah it is uh it is icewind dale that indeed all right and she says take care y'all and the window the board slides closed awesome why i say we all round up and Go find this uh, sea monster here. Let's do it. All right. So you guys head to the docks and um, Grinsk is out there. You see him kind of wrapping some rope around his his arm and um, and uh, seems to be chomping on some kind of fat cigar of some sort and um, says, oh, mm, good, you're here. Uh, just getting things all set here for you. Um, any uh, any questions before you you head out? And you see we all... Doc. You see two boats there. Um, and he says, I recommend bringing in two boats just in case something happens to one. You know, there's some ice flows out there and all that stuff. Sometimes hard to avoid. But uh, understand, if you lose one of the boats, I will be docking your pay. How big are these boats? About would you say? Pretty like, small like, row boats. Um, okay. They could fit, you know, like two people um, each probably. Well, no, they could fit more than that with especially um, smaller folk. Probably okay. four would be a little bit push on it. Fizzwig, this is what he, this is what I suggest. Two of us go on one of these boats, Clay and the other. How's that strike you? That sounds like a good idea to me. I just want to get on last. You want to get on last? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna get on last. Okay. That that I can manage. 
<coughs> All right. So uh, you guys board the boats. Um, and as Fizzwick gets into the boat, he runs up to the dwarf and he grabs the cigar out of his mouth and says, Runk! And he jumps in the boy boat and pushes off. <laughs> go ahead, Fizzwick. Go ahead and make a... Um, a Or tries to do this, should I say. Yeah, go ahead and make a dexterity um, check. Okay. Um, Are you using D&D &D Beyond? I am. Yeah, so you just click on the like dexterity box 16, with like the plus uh, 21. Four. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he, you know, he's just standing there with the rope like uh, da, 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 and like just whoo, clean just sweep so, out of the mouth and whoo, before he even knows it you're on the boat hey so you little would shite have, would clay have seen that i don't know would you have clay i, I think so he wasn't I trying to hide it i don't think i don't know that i would take my eyes much off of physic anyway <laughs> so i i'm actually going to stick my hand out my my arm out as he's trying to jump into the boat and like catch him in midair. All right. <laughs> um, take my cigar. <laughs> go ahead and make a oh boy, what would what would be best here? I don't know. What do you think, Clay? Uh, Dexterity again or that's a good or cigar at, too. Athletics. 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 Right. athletics, sure. Go Maybe. with athletics. Uh, 20. Okay. Not natural. And what are you trying to do? I just want to take the cigar back. Okay. Yeah, you take, you, so yeah, Fizzwick's jumping and you just kind of, you know, lean over the edge of your boat and whoo, swipe it out of his mouth and a little. Like I'm picturing, have you little guys seen uh, face, Harry and the Hendersons when Harry catches the dog in midair, just around the belly? Just chunk, and I'm just going <laughs> to take his cigar. Yep. That's a that's a deep cut, man. I don't, I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't either. Child of the eighties. I don't remember man. a dog in Harry and Henry's either. Uh, a little terrier. Uh, good stuff. All right. So. All right. So I grabbed the cigar and I actually walked back over to the dwarf and hand it back to him. Oh wow! Okay. He says, "Thank you very much. You should keep I better company." Anything. Yeah. Well, I don't have a choice. It's part of the game. <laughs> oh, i love it i see uh comment in the chat imagine how many fish you would have to catch to buy a new boat <laughs> yeah, we're not going to talk about that <laughs> you'd be fishing for a year for this guy but no i didn't say that you didn't hear me say that um totally out of character all right so um you guys are headed out onto the water um and what we're going to do is this. I should probably get dice at some point this session here. Here we go. Um, so, fishing in Icewind Dale is a treacherous sport, uh, but one that the uh, inhabitants rely on for survival um, often because there is very little else to eat around here given the weather. Um, but uh, what we're going to do is Every hour you all spend out on the lake, uh, we're going to be making a, uh, everyone's going to be making a DC 15 wisdom survival check. All right. So survival is the skill we're going for. So you all push out onto the lake and there are, you know, the occasional ice flows as well. I can't remember if there's, it says anything about avoiding those, but that might be fun. Uh, ah, Yes. <laughs> The lake is covered in ice flows, which makes travel dangerous. <laughs> so, um, any character who is steering the boat should make a DC 14 wisdom check. So let's do that first. Who's steering the boat that Drukvar and Fizwick is in? Are in? Obviously not me. Yeah, I, that's me for sure. That's all right. Drukvar all the way. Yep. Yeah. So Drukvar, go ahead and make a uh, wisdom check. Uh, wisdom check or survival check? This one is just wisdom. Just wisdom? Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Seventeen. Excellent. You have no problem navigating through the ice flows. Uh, you know, here and there getting a little bit close to one, but uh, overall, not doing too shabby. Okay. All right. And um, Clay. 
You got a five. I got a five. Okay. So, um, the and I'm going to ask you to write this down if you could. Um, the boat has, uh, the boat you are in has 50 hit points, and um, it takes 1d6 bludgeoning damage. So I'm going to roll for that. And that's just going to be two damage it takes. All right. So you hit something, take a little bit of damage. All right. And our next check is for fishing. So there are enough fishing rods for the three of you. And um, you can go ahead and cast your lines. You're far enough out on the lake. Uh, it's been about an hour since you left the dock and you feel like you found a good spot. So go ahead and everyone now make a survival check for me. Truck far got 18. Okay. 15 for me. All right. And Fizwick? 13. Okay. So, um, in this case, um, Clay and Druckvar, you feel tugs on your line. Ooh. And it is strong. <laughs> um, <laughs> next, I need you to go ahead and make a strength check to see if you can pull this thing in. No, 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 no. We can't do it, man. We're just sitting here. We got to get the boat Ooh. moving. 22. 20. Okay. And I'm going to put up here, too. Um, you guys would probably be familiar with the knucklehead trout being in Icewind Dale, so you can maybe see this on the, uh, the oh, overlay that's not here. A sea monster. I thought it was the sea monster. We're just sitting there. <laughs> no, no, no. This is, this is a, uh, this <laughs> is the knucklehead <laughs> trout. <laughs> Blake screams as he sees the fish come towards the boat. <laughs> 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 all right so this is the knucklehead trout of icewind dale um and you've probably seen them before they are huge fish weigh anywhere from you know for a full-grown fish from 50 to 70 pounds so um uh who uh, did you guys both make a strength check yet yep okay drug yes. bar what did you get 22 okay you just you know sinew and muscle flexing just lean back and plop this thing in the boat and there's a you notice there's a little club in the boat and you just well not a not so little actually for a fish this size and you just boom and successfully this fish for the moment lays still in the boat this yes. massive knucklehead trout okay okay this wick jumps, uh, tries to tries to jump immediately and put his his sword into the fish's head to make sure it doesn't leave the boat. He's seen a number of fish jump out of a boat. Yep. He's not new to fishing. All right. He, he's going to try to put this thing out right now. Yep. And so, yeah, you, I would say you successfully, it is out. You successfully um, can, well, let's do this. Go ahead and make it um, just a dexterity um dexterity check uh, and you only have to get a 10 25 okay yeah wow. easy <laughs> yes you definitely suffering yeah, you did a backflip Biswick doesn't want it in pain he wants it to like end its suffering yep awesome he uses Dark all of bar, that be careful to poke a hole in the bottom of your boat <laughs> <laughs> all right um uh, drug fire wants to make a suggestion sure Fizzwig. Thank you for what you've done. I'm sure now we're certain this fish is dead. But I'll tell you what, I'm feeling wary. I'm feeling wary. I'm going to ask you something. Where are the short fellas on this lake right now? This isn't Clay's concern. But I think that you should climb on my shoulders so you can see further out towards the horizon. Keep an eye out as we fish for that beast. What do you say? Okay. And he just kind of climbs up the back of his like shoulders and gets up there and okay. he's kind of perched up there like a parrot a little bit because this is a big dude already so you know he's got plenty enough room to stand mm -hmm. so he's got the fishing line in and he looks he looks over and does a double take like what uh... fizzy fizzy can you do something for me can you take can you sweep your eyes over the horizon for me tell me if you see anything I don't see anything yet. Um, right, let, me, let me tell you if you do here. Um, okay. <laughs> let 
you a moment here. You notice no. Fizzwick doesn't smell too good. Mm. <laughs> um, the wind his cloak billows up. open in the wind. <laughs> yeah. The wind picks up, actually. Um, and the lake's still waters become a little more choppy than normal. Um, did I did I land my fish? And um, go ahead and make a, a strength check for you as well. I what got a 20. Oh, you got a 20. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in this case, yes, you do. You land your fish with authority. Okay. I take out my axe and whack him on the head. All right. Very good. Very decisively. Excellent. Two fish down, many to go, perhaps. All right. Um, so you guys uh, continue uh, for another hour moseying around. Um, are you wanting to travel much further, or do you want to kind of stay close to where you are? I mean, are we catching fish where we are? For sure. I mean, if, if there's no reason to move, then we probably shouldn't. I like how he thinks. This is a fisherman here. All yeah. right. Well, let's stay here. And Fizwick, are you just keeping watch, or are you also fishing? Yeah, pretty much just, just keeping watch, because I'm only, what, like 60, 70 pounds? Yeah. So I... I yeah, we, we might lose you. Not, not terribly unwise. <laughs> Clay's hoping Clay's hoping you try for it. <laughs> he is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> go ahead and um, Druckvar and Clay, go ahead and make a uh, wisdom survival check once again. 15 is the number you're looking for. 17. Uh, 11. All right. Druckvar, go ahead. This thing is tugging fiercely. And... Go ahead and make your strength check. See if you can land it. Fishy, fishy. Come on, get him. Come on, you can do it. Four. Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Not so good. Um, you are actually... Fizzwick holds on. Yeah, can Fizzwick... Can you help me? Sure. He Fizzwick on. sees you struggling. Fizzwick, go ahead and roll a... Um... He runs down to the pole, and he's like, he's bracing his feet on his legs. All right. Fizzwick, go ahead and roll a uh, uh, strength check as well. You need to get a 10 in order to successfully help him. Seven. Okay. Druckvar, uh, you're not able to. You see his, uh, his body slides over as Fizzwick kind of stands there like, and then Druckvar goes flying over the side of the boat, into the water, <gasps> plunging into the icy depths. Um, Play go immediately. Ahead. I was, go oh, go, yeah, go ahead. It was fun playing with you no, guys. You, you go ahead, Clay. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, Clay immediately takes off his coat and jumps in after him. Okay. Uh, him, probably not me. You um, well, you're, you're still you're still in the well, boat. I'm I, I in the boat. Yep. Yep. All right. So, uh, Clay and Druckvar. Um, well, Clay, go ahead and make a strength check for me. See if you can hoist him into the boat. Eighteen. Yep. So you have successfully hoist him into the boat, and. Um, you man I'll just say you managed to climb in yourself as well, being quite large and strong. But you're both now suffering the consequences of frigid water. And I need you to make a DC ten constitution saving throw. Seventeen. Twenty-five. Okay. You are very cold, and um, but for the moment. Uh, you kind of stave off the cold. However, you realize something is going to need to change here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to think for a second here. If um, Wait a second, everybody's in, still in the water, right? Like, quiet. quiet no, we're all in one boat now. Oh, so no, I think, um, well, Clay, did you climb into their boat like right after Druckvar? Well, I would imagine I was far enough away from my boat, my boat, that 
that would have been the, the smarter choice than swimming back to my boat. Yeah, I think that is smart. Yep. Okay. So, um, yeah, what would you guys like to do? We're all in the same boat. You're all in the same boat. Oh, uh, see, I told you I've got this blanket. See, I told you I was right about that stupid dwarf, and then I got this blanket. So, and I cover him up, and I put the blanket on them to warm him back up a little bit. I I've actually got... just stand up and shrug it off and go grab the oars and start rowing or rowing our, this boat over back oh, to man, mine. that chip on your shoulder is going to get old, buddy. It's oddly <laughs> shaped like a goblin. I say... Um, let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Let's start infringement too. Let Let's start a fire in this boat. The empty one, Clay. I'm you don't need it. Going over to my boat, Clay. You don't need it. Let's start a fire in this boat. Strip down to our skivs. Get warm. Go back to the other boat. Let's this one burn. Now I remember why I work alone. Are they actually freezing? Like, yeah, they'll continue. You, they'll continue will, to have to make um, Constitution saving throws. Uh, let's see here. Well, I've got my coat, maybe my, no, maybe my jacket fire. in my my uh, boat. That was which is what I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get and maybe he's Wim Hof. Mm -hmm. it. It's only get gonna make him to, stronger. Uh, get back to fishing. I mean, if we burn our boats, we're paying for one of them. It is possible though that he they're strong enough though, right, to not need to start a fire. I mean, yeah, you know what? Icy tundra probably wouldn't be the first time one of these manly burly men have jumped into the water and on a, a you know nice, what? icy day. Here's here's what I here's what I think. Uh, I can tell Clay's not into my idea, and so I, what's your oh burn, burning a boat? Yes. <laughs> I just want to know: Do we actually need to burn the boat? I mean, it wouldn't be my first choice. Are, are we about to light a fire that we don't need to start? Nate, do we need to light a fire? Well. Clay and uh, Dr Druckvar will continue to suffer the consequences of the cold and continue to have to make constitution saving throws if uh, something does not change is all I'll say. Look, Grins can't see us out here. For all he knows, the sea monster got this boat. And if it doesn't burn all the way through, then it comes back with us. And uh, he's none the wiser, except for the burn marks. All right, I see you're not taking uh, my idea out to heart I, here. I can't come up with the reason why we shouldn't torch this thing right now. So <laughs> he's he's already got a f amber. I already knew Fizzy was going to be like in on this idea. I knew he was going to be all about it. So he's already got it going. <laughs> Wait, is our is our boat on fire? Yeah, please. Not. I've, I'm, I've got an Would amber. Yeah. Which which boat is Fizzy Week starting on fire? Is it is it? Can the, I uh, can I pick Fizzwick up again by the back and like? turn him upside down, dunk his hands in the water to put out the fire and send him back down. Um, These boats don't belong to us. We're not just going to set them on fire. You're right. Clay's right. When you're right, you're right. Clay's right. Uh, Drukvar just takes off his wet, like heavy overcoat and he reaches out his hand and, and uh, towards the towards uh, Fizzwick's blanket. And looks to Fizzwick with a look of like, is this okay? Like, can I have this? Do it, do it. <laughs> He's begging I, you. That's one, two against one. And then Fizzwick takes the ember and he throws it on the blanket and he <sighs> tries to throw it in the boat. How do we Wait. roll for that? Okay, say again what you're trying to do. <laughs> I'm going to throw my ember on the blanket. Okay. And then throw it on the boat. Sorry, I'm just trying to get our map going here, guys. Just give me a second here. Because he took my cigar. We, we so should use a visual like here. <laughs> we need to warm up, right? Yes. Okay, so sorry. Say again. Wait, there's a map right there? Okay, so we have some wood. We might not build the... Well, there's no way you could start a fire out here with this. I'm just wondering in my, in my own mind how long we could like burn a boat until it's unseaworthy. Totally thought we were going for how the... Big are those, how big are those ice... Or whatever so, they are. Yeah, I mean, you can see, like, there's a big one. Um, it's right about here. Um, 
you know, you can only see the edge of it on here, but yes, you can see there is a, a, a much larger one there. Okay. Could we, rather than burning a boat, <laughs> could we... Would... Good. My could mind's we... cloudy. My mind's cloudy. Could we... Could we move over to one of the larger ones and start a fire on the on the ice? Is it sure? Would we reckon it was thick enough to be able to do that? Yeah, and I mean, it seems after to be, we've warmed up, seems to be covered in a good amount of snow. Um, you know, it's probably a, a good four feet um, at its highest point above the water. I like that um, idea. Okay. Then you can jump off back. We can just bail out on our boat if it gets too bad, or we can just sit on the boat and enjoy the fire on the boat. All right, so you guys want to get out and start a fire. Um, I'll say, yeah, you no checks necessary. Um, you guys managed to uh, slide the boats up uh, in such a way that, or maybe there's probably some rope too, so you can just you know, kind of tie them up to something or hold the ropes, and you managed to start a fire. Um, about probably an hour or so after this blaze is, uh, oh, Hold on. What are you guys burning exactly? I have well, a he's got such a chip on his shoulder that I threw in some extra. Mm -hmm. I thought we. I thought Nate. I thought we get away with that. I, <laughs> I was looking at my equipment. I was going to say something. I was like, maybe we won't have to do that. Um. My bedroll. Well, I have a. Um, let's see here. I have a. What are they called? I have a tinder box. Okay. Uh, and, tor and torches. I mean, we could, there's several things we could probably burn. Okay. Yeah. I would say that, you know, even if, even if it's torches, like you've yeah. all got several, I think if you got like yeah. an adventures pack or dungeon use pack and that's enough to, to start something. Um, the tinder box just has, um, says usually dry cloth soaked in light oil or something like that. Um, but if you're going to burn through some torches, we'll say, hey, you each throw on three torches, let's say, and you manage to get enough of a little something uh, that it burns. Okay. Um, so yeah, go ahead and each take three torches from your inventory and mm -hmm. a fire is lit. Um, okay, so about an hour passes and you're feeling like you might be warm enough, um, <laughs> given the blanket and given the dry, cl uh, dry uh, coat that Clay fortunately had the wherewithal to save. Um, heading back out onto the boats, um, it's time for a little fishing. All right. Go ahead and make your... Oh, you know what? I forgot one thing. Hold on. And... Um, you encounter a keel boat uh, that seems to be flying the Targos flag. Uh, there are four fishers on board, and uh, it keeps its distance from you, but you can see it out there in the distance. Um, and you can see them kind of with their own lines in the water, uh, but they don't seem to be paying much attention to you. Okay. Right. I say we steer around them and find our own place. Fair enough. Yep. Yeah. Good suggestion. All right. So you guys managed to throw your lines in again. And after another hour, you can make a um, survival check once again. No fish were caught in that second round. Six. Nine. nine. All right. Oh, another actually, hour. Five. Okay. I lied. And Fizzwick, you're not fishing still. You're kind of keeping watch. Yeah. Okay. You can't catch any of them, I don't think, right? Like, You could try, and I guess, you know, if you get a tug, Druckvar could always help you, but that worked out really well last time. Yeah, scary. After is it all. possible... Is there any way other to find these fish other than just, like, tossing in the, the line? Hmm. What do you have in mind? Like, do they are they known for, like, circling around icebergs, or maybe, like, I see some driftwood, maybe they might be... Hmm. uh hiding in that driftwood and fishing you know like a bass at like certain kind of environment yeah. maybe sure. we shouldn't just 
let's try going over by the driftwood and seeing if we can get like a better response. Yeah. All right. So we'll say you're over here. You kind of managed to slowly sidle between these uh, ice flows here. And um, now uh, we can go ahead and let's, um, yeah, why don't you guys make a um, survival check with advantage this time? Anyone who would like to fish. Sixteen. Seven was my best. All right, Druckvar. Well. Can you land Please. the fish? Strength uh, check. Opposed strength check with the knucklehead trout. Eleven. Okay. You start to struggle. Fizwick, do you want to try again? Yeah, Fizwick, what are you, just going to leave me here? Or are you... uh, Fizwick definitely jumps back over to, to assist. Like, okay. And actually, I did it wrong last time. What it's supposed to do with the help action is now yeah. you get to roll again, Drukvar. You get to roll with advantage if he's helping. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, so. Oh, Fourteen. You can do it. You Fourteen can do is it. what you need. You Twenty-one. Nice. Um, I knew I could count on you. His feet are off the ground. He's just hanging onto the pole now. He's not really helping at all. It's all just direct bar at this point. <laughs> yep. Uh, Michael's in the chat. Hi, Michael. We're sorry you're not with us. Hope you're having a good day at work, buddy. <laughs> uh, um, and we look forward to, to getting you in next week. Um, so, um, okay. So, yes, you managed to land land yet another fish and now nice. i forgot to roll at the end of the uh let's see i gotta roll two things here because i forgot one of them and let's see what happens the lake is still and quiet as, for that last hour and for the next hour the lake is no oh it's never good when the dm says that the oh lake is quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um interesting there is a bit of a disturbance in the water. And you see some ripples disrupt the surface were on my shoulders. of the lake. And a knucklehead trout uh, leaps <laughs> into the air. <gasps> and <laughs> this is kind of hilarious. Where to go here? Um. Ah, uh, shoot, sorry. I lost I lost the lake event. Um and it makes a tail attack against let's see if I let's see who it's going to attack here. One or two is Fizwick, three or four is uh Clay, five or six is Drukvar. It's a one tail lashing out at um <clears throat> Fizwick. And Fizwick, what is your passive perception score? Oh uh, well passive it's passive wisdom, I think, under your skills, maybe. Twelve. Ooh, okay. Um, so, yeah, it's going to make a tail attack at you. And it rolls a 19, so that is going to hit you for... Three... Um, wow, interesting. Oh, yeah, three bludgeoning damage. Yep. <laughs> And, Watch out. Oh, and Druckvar, you're in the same boat. Are you guys all still in the same boat, by the way? Or did you go back to your own clay? I yeah, mean, we're back well, to our original. Yeah. All right. So I would say, Druckvar, what is your passive wisdom? 15. Oh, okay. You actually get to, you are not surprised by it. You saw it coming. Okay. And you get to make an opportunity attack against the knucklehead trout. <laughs> so okay. you see it thwack Fizwick and continue its arc down. And um, you can either try to uh, grapple it or just hit it and do some damage. I'm going to hit it with a Warhammer. Okay. Um, okay, my attack roll is 16. That hits. And go ahead okay. and roll your damage. All right. Four points of damage. All right. Um yeah, it, it, it seems hit, but you see it whoosh, scurry away. 
Oh! <laughs> All right. Um, so, another hour passes, and you all can make another uh, check here. This time, no advantage. Um, the area has been disturbed a little bit. A clay I see hanging his head in disappointment. I'm going to delete this app. Uh, I got a four. All right. Oh, man, I can still taste it. It hit me right in the mouth. I, I got a five. Okay. You can barely hear Clay chuckle from the other boat. <laughs> All right. And let's see what happens this hour. Oh, okay. Man. <clears throat> Ripples once again disrupt the surface of the water. This time, the boat begins to bob from side to side. <clears throat> uh, you see, Clay, a large mass glide through the dark water below you. Um, My axes are out. Why don't we go ahead and make a um, nature check at anyone? Can make this, but it glides first under Clay's boat. So Clay, you go first with your nature check. We should all make it, or anyone can make it? Anyone can make it, but I want to hear from Clay first. 18. Okay. You see a long neck, four large fins, and a, a torso uh, about the size of your boat with a long tail behind it. It looks to be some sort of plesiosaurus and um now i am to roll for what it does so so we shall be doing a nature roll to determine whether or not we saw that or not yeah so yeah um 13 8 okay so yeah clay is really the only one who sees uh oh no actually uh I climbed back up on his Fizwick shoulders did too. too yeah Yep, Fizwick did too. 13 is exactly the number you needed to identify this as a plesiosaurus. Oh my god, I, saw, I just saw a dinosaur in the water, you guys. I swear <laughs> to god, I just saw a water dinosaur. <laughs> and as soon as um, you see it, just as quickly, it disappears. And that is where we're going to take oh, a break. I don't see it no more. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, everybody. We'll be right back. When we come back, uh, we'll just let the, the players introduce themselves a little bit, too. And, uh, and then we'll jump back in and see what happens with the sea monster. Uh, thanks so much for joining, everybody, and for hanging out. I muted, my, I muted myself. Sorry. <laughs> I muted myself a little too soon. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, everybody, for session one here. Uh, we're going to be playing every other Monday, so plan on us two weeks from tonight uh, for session two. Mike will be joining us for that one, too. And, uh, yeah, hang tight. We'll be back in a few. Just going to take a quick bio break.
a break. Hello, everybody. We're back. Back with the lake monster. Um, before we jump in, back into playing, I wanted to give my players a chance just to introduce themselves here. Um, tonight, uh, we are um, not joined by Michael, so I'll just first introduce him. Michael's cool, and you should check him out on YouTube uh, if you go to Dead Aussie Gamer. In fact, I will put a link to that in the chat a moment. Dead Aussie Gamer. Um, and he'll be joining us as well. Um, uh, next week. So, and you'll learn more about his character perhaps, um, perhaps later in this session if we get to that. Okay. Uh, but I want to give my other players a chance to introduce themselves as well. Um, and I'll just say from my perspective, Will is one of my best buds going way back uh, to sixth grade, I believe it was. Oh. So, um, Will, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm your typical nerd. There's Star Wars stuff, Marvel, DC, all that fun things. New to the Dungeons and Dragons, though. Always been an admirer since I, since me and Nate went, used to sneak in bookshops and we'd go over and we'd sit and look at the Dungeons and Dragons books and like all the different book covers. And we met actually when I was just a little kid on the the side of the what the sidewalk on the the, the playground, reading comic books. Yep. And uh, yeah, so. And uh, okay. Will just opened, I'm, I'm going to give a plug here for, for you, Will. Uh, Will just opened an Etsy shop. Um, he's trying to start a uh, business. He's been kind of playing around with dice making for like seven months now. And, um, you know, still stuff to learn there. But he's been making some cool jewelry. Um, and I'm going to put a link to that. It is in the video description, but I just posted it. So if you've been watching the video, it might not be there. I'm going to put a link to that in the chat as well. And you should go check him out and support him. He's got some really beautiful um, handmade stuff. Yeah, go buy my stuff. Dark Sea Workshop. I like two or three things. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's it's beautiful stuff, man. Uh, I'm impressed, and I think it, it. I think people who like fantasy will be it's uh, inspired. Like, by yeah, it. like not, not Nate ain't giving you guys just a plug. I worked like really hard on it, and you're like little tiny mountains that you can see with auroras and. There's like uh, stars and stuff in them, and I'm trying to do dice right now. So if you're into like galaxy dice, especially galaxy dice, like I'm already putting out some cool like necklaces. I just I can't get one face right. It's that one face. The grind. The grind. Um, yeah, and uh, I think you need to make one, by the way, called Ariel's Rhyme and make it look all like, I don't know. Well, I guess it's just an Aurora. So, yeah, but I think there you could go. name them that. Uh, and you probably go. wouldn't get sued by Wizards of the Coast at all. Totally <laughs> 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 different. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Um, Alex, tell us. Alex and Ryan, I'll just say from my perspective, and then I'll let them talk. These guys, um, I uh, started playing D&D &D with about probably two or three years ago, guys. I think me and Alex were talking at a New Year's Eve party. And he was like, oh, you play D&D? &D? And I was like, yeah. He's like, I've always wanted to try that. And, uh, and then Ryan, we were actually in a Pathfinder group for a minute, uh, like way back when I was brand new, like when I first started WASD 20. And uh, we played a couple games before that group fell apart. So anyway, they've both been players in my home group and now COVID, so here they are on the internet. <laughs> Go ahead and introduce yourself, Alex. Yeah, you that's start. right. Like Nate said, um, I was always interested in D&D, &D, but before I met Nate, uh, and even though we went, to the, we went to college together, but didn't really know each other at the time. But before I met Nate at that uh, that party, I didn't. Uh, I never had a chance to actually play. So it's been really cool to, you know, head over to Nate's house from time to time. And now that uh, we're in quarantine, to play online, and I'm really excited about it. Um, in my day to day life, I'm a medical animator and illustrator. That's what I do um, on a daily basis, and it's kind of a cool fantastical break that I get to take from that kind of stuff so yeah very cool um and Ryan hello um yeah like Nate said uh oh man probably been doing tabletop RPGs for five years maybe does that seem right um he was the that, that group was the the Pathfinder group was the first group that I'd actually played uh played a tabletop rpg and um before that i was like i wanted to play but didn't know anybody else who played so it was fortuitous that nate asked us uh and some of our other friends to play 
Um, yeah, other than that, uh, I also am a huge nerd. Uh, comic books, board games, you name it. Um, for a day job, I'm a graphic designer and a web designer, among other things. Um, my nerdier hobbies would include mini painting um and i also do canvas and other various crafty things um there's not a whole lot that i won't try as far as uh as far as making stuff goes so um uh this is kind of right up my alley as far as scenery and minis and and all that stuff but uh I think overall, I just love telling stories. So that's that's what drew me to this this type of game. Yeah. I have a question for Ryan. Yes, sir. Are we looking at you right now in your workshop? Or no, is this like an not. office or some other no. thing? No, well, place. it's my COVID office. I'm uh, okay. in my living room next to my bookshelf. That's my backyard. OK. Um, I, I will be setting up an office probably in the basement. Um, that's a longer story, but. Okay. Um, that's mine. All that stuff you're buying on mine, that's where I stand it, right back there. <laughs> that, that's his backyard. Right there. <laughs> you are looking at the Dark Sea Workshop right behind you. You're looking wow. at I'll, hey, hey, Will, I'll order one of... Um... Yeah, that one. <laughs> the purplish one. Getting it now. Get your fat head out of the way. I want to see him. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, no, Ryan did not paint minis for the sesh, but Ryan is a, yeah, Ryan, I can vouch for Ryan's mini painting chops. He's good. Um, I do take commissions. There's and, my plug. I would like to talk mm, to you more cool. later. Okay. So yeah, yeah, if you're looking for mini painting commissions, Ryan, Ryan, uh, could be your guy. Um, and Michael says in the chat, who's joining us from work right now. Uh, but, uh, he says, according to some, I'm an actor trying to make people believe the earth is round. I love it. Um, Yes, and and uh, Michael was also uh, the driving force behind our tokens that you see here, made in Hero Forge. Um, so yeah, they're one of my ongoing sponsors. They're not sponsoring this stream yet, um, but um, yeah, and and well, Michael uh, is also sponsored by them. So was happy to dive in and help us with our character stuff here. So we'll be seeing more of that, and you see that on the thumbnail and stuff too. So thanks to Michael for his help with that. All right, anything else, guys? Oh, I think that killed some dinosaurs. Yeah. All right, let's do it. We're jumping back, <coughs> jumping back in. So, a large dark mass in the water below you. And one of our, uh, someone in the chat also reminded me that it is now dark out um, because the aurora that gives sort of a twilight level of daylight usually is only from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So we are past that, and it is quite dark out here. Um, so I'm not sure how many of you have dark vision. I'm Pretty assuming sure Druckvar do, does. Okay. Yeah. All three of you do have dark vision. Excellent. So you can yeah. see um, in darkness as if it were dim light, and dim light as if it were daylight, I believe is how that works. Mm -hmm. um, so by the dim light, you were able to see this shape below you. And um, let's see, it disappears from view. But <clears throat> all right, you feel something under the boat and it is lifting the boat. And what I need you to do, um, we'll go with clay in this case. Um, go ahead, and, and I'm gonna say your boats are actually kind of bumped up against each other by this. And we're gonna make this happen here on our map. I'm using um, uh, Owlbear Rodeo here, and Normally, when we use this, I'll be giving you guys access to actually moving your tokens around. But since we've just got two boats here, I'll just kind of do the shuffling for us to keep things simple. Um, but this is a, a new virtual tabletop that you may remember if you watched the Provokers. Uh, my good friend Matt Click, uh, he kind of introduced it to me there. And, um, and I'm really liking it. It's just super simple, quick, not much to it really, but it does 
meet the needs. All right. So underneath the boat, you do feel um, <coughs> a surge and a swell. And I need everyone to go ahead and make a strength check for me. 11. 25. 22. Okay. And... Um, Oh, where'd it go? Okay. So the, the number to get was 12. Um, and yes, we have enough successes that the boat does not capsize. But you could feel this creature trying to do that. Um, and next. Um, a head emerges from the lake a long neck and this thing stares at you with beady eyes and i was so sure i had a picture and i don't <laughs> freaking a when my it's picture solid. sorry guys no speech <laughs> gotta take advantage of the uh the art that uh they provide for us here fizzwick is still on Drukvar, holding on, just looking Whoa. at this, this thing. Are you holding his hair? Like, just like reins? Yeah, he's full horse. on, like grabbing just his <laughs> hair. You've got his beard up around his head. Yeah, gonna... <laughs> it bears its teeth. What would you like to do? Uh. So Clay is kind of straddling the middle seat, and he's had his axes out. Um, who, where, like, where is the head? Is it? We'll just say it's right where you see it in this image. It is basically, I would say it's a little bit further away, though. Um, For... It's probably a good um, fifteen feet back from uh, the front of um, Druckvar and Fizwick's boat. Just as high. Mm -hmm. So am I closer to it or are they closer to it, would you say? So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to, um, sorry, here, I'm going to uh, get our map back now that you've seen the image here. And let's position things where they would actually be on this bad boy. So we're going to say that this right here is Fizwick and Druckvar's boat. And this right here is your boat, Clay. All right. And it is right about here. Now, have we have we all seen it at this point? Yes, you can all okay. see it very clearly now. Okay. Long neck, head raised up out of the water. Uh, I don't want to interrupt Clay. Clay, were you going to do something? No. Uh, I, Drukvar takes his, uh, um, uh, one of his knucklehead trout, the one that uh, Fizzwig slashed with a sword, mm -hmm. tears the head off of it and tosses it towards the plesiosaur or whatever, the, towards the monster. Hmm. You see what? kind of an odd light in its eye. It kind of eyes you. Uh, in, in a in a way that you wouldn't expect a beast to, um, um, and it, it work, picks man. it up it and you see it devour it, and then it kind of growls at you. But it's not moving towards us; it's just looking at us. Mm -hmm. At the moment, yes. Um, Clay, is Clay close enough to jump onto the bow of the other boat? Could could I? do that sure go ahead and make a um like an athletics check and we'll just say you, you need like a an eight to succeed and it's not hard uh 18 yep so you easily do so okay um i'm gonna actually uh i'm gonna put one of my axes away and i'm gonna pull the whip that i have at my belt out and just crack it in front of the the beast's face. Yeah. This wick has some pretty high animal handling, you guys. He, he's he he's pretty good with the beasts. 
you're more than welcome. We might not have to fight this thing with the whip, maybe, and Fizzwick, maybe. If we can, can we get any idea of like its intentions? Um, well, it it has tried to capsize your boat. It's kind of now, uh, perhaps a little bit wary of you. Um, it it looks like it might want to attack. It has bared its teeth at you, but it's also seeing a bit of a show of strength from you. Um, so it's just kind of. Oh, guys, I think what we need to do from it. is have Drekvar run up to the the bow of the boat and just scream at it as loud as you can. Let them know that we're not going to be prey. Well, well, why not you, Fiswick? I can't yell that loud, man. <laughs> okay. Um, Drukvar heads up to the bow of the boat next to Clay and calls out across the water. Uh, Got two rather heavy people standing on the beach. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna flip this way. <laughs> Yells at the beast. Uh, um, who who goes there? Who goes there? Yeah, maybe it'll talk to us. I don't know. I thought you were gonna like. Tell I'm them. listening. Oh, Ooh. it says. Oh, I just, Drug Bars looks back with a surprised look on his face. He doesn't even know, he doesn't know where to go from here. <laughs> Check that. You see who I am. No, oh, man, you're talking to it now. You better just see this through. Okay, okay. Um, What do you want from us? I want to destroy your boats. Uh, no. That that we can't agree to. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have you guys uh, pick two of you um, uh -huh. who can go ahead and make a um, arcana check for me. Oh boy, not me. Um. Yeah, not so good. What, what, Fizzwick, how are you feeling about that? Uh, minus one, man. Uh, all right, I'll I'll try. Uh, and two of you can try. Natural twenty. Okay. Ten. So I'm gonna say that Clay, you have some recollection of um, a group of druids in the area, frost druids, who actually are loyal to Ariel, the Frost Maiden who have been casting awakening spells on animals in the area. Mm. Ah, I see. So awakening spells being that it gives them uh, like some sort of sentience um, like a like a human and the yeah. ability to speak. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. What did the lady say that we were supposed to do to, out here with the thing just document it yeah she just wants information about it and it also um ryan you would know clay would know that uh the effect of this spell is uh, like a permanent thing on um, mm -hmm. um and it's yeah there are there are, you but i know what level of intelligence this thing has mm. i mean is it like dragon intelligence or no, I think you would have enough experience and given your natural 20 that you've probably met an awakened animal somewhere. I'll let you decide what sort of animal and maybe that could be an interesting story sometime. But um, okay, yeah, let's say that you have faced one of these before and you know, like, eh, it was still kind of a dumb animal, but more intelligent, certainly than it was than it had been. Okay. Um, so I kind of I, I actually like put my hand out and just push struck far a little bit back behind me. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and I put my other ax away and I start coiling my, my whip up and I uh, can, can we make a trade? We're here for the fish. We'll be at, we'll be gone soon. Mm. Ravison says 
that I must do my part to help the Frost Maiden, who wants the people of Bremen to suffer. My job, as you, um, it doesn't point, sorry. <laughs> as you have come from Bremen, I recognize those boats, is to destroy. What can you possibly offer me in return? Uh, if I, if I disobey Vresevin, I may become a stupid beast again. Well, we got a spare barbarian you can have. A spare what? Barbarian. Oh, <laughs> I literally, like, I did not hear that. Like, I just completely ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> I am not hungry. I have plenty of food here in the water. My job is only to destroy your boat. What do you get if you destroy us? What was promised to you? I was told that I had to destroy at least three boats per week from Bremen in order to avoid turning back into what I was. I like it. The ability to speak, to think intelligently. I imagine it's the same thing that the bear who spoke to me a while back said. But he had been that way for years. Hmm. Make a... <clears throat> Persuasion check here. Four. Oh, mm. You're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> he said out of character. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is what I must do. And everyone go ahead and roll initiative. Okay. Fifteen. All right. Seven. Sorry guys, my eye itch is like a beast. Eight. Okay. okay. The plesiosaur lunges toward the nearest boat. I believe the one that all of you were on. <laughs> and <laughs> it takes, it moves to take a large bite out of the front of the boat, essentially. Just, and uh, it rolls. Okay, so yes, it is going to do that. And that is going to be. <clears throat> Oh man, I don't even have enough D6s for this bad boy. Oh. Hold on, guys. He wasn't kidding when he said TP. He's, he's going into the D6 safe. I can't keep doing this voice, and I've only got like seven hit points. If you kill Fizzwick on the, the first episode, this is not. <laughs> <laughs> got to get a little bit more out of it than that. All right. That's going to be. Um, wow. 14 damage to that boat. Now that one is a little bit damaged already. There is actually a bite mark uh, out of it. Uh, and that one has 40 hit points. So that was just, what did I say? Um, 14. Okay, 14. So it's, 20, so, so it's 26 points left? Yep. So it's right. like halfway gone. Yeah. All right. And now it is... Uh, let's see. I'm sorry. I got to write down your initiatives here. I'm a little bit rusty when it comes to D and D. <laughs> All right. Uh, so who got, uh, anyone get above a 10? I did 15. Okay. So I got 15 and then Ryan, what'd you get? Seven, seven and will eight. eight. All right. So it is Drukvar's turn. Okay. Um, Drukvar takes this is what I'd like to do this as a free action. Takes the amulet he usually has hanging around his neck on a chain, snaps it off, and then mounts it on the front of his shield so he can use it in battle. 
Mm. And then he um, he uh, calls forth um, a guiding bolt. Um, a flash of light streaks towards a creature of your choice within range. Uh, I'm going to make a ranged attack spell or a ranged spell attack against the target on a hit. The target takes 4d6 radiant damage, and the next attack roll made against this target before the end of your next turn has advantage thanks to the mystical dim light glittering on the attack until then. So I'm going to take an attack roll here. Mm-hmm. 11. All right, that is going to miss. Oh! Okay, um, I'm going to use my movement then. I'm going to jump off this this boat that's half damaged onto the other boat. Okay. Yep, go ahead and make a um, athletics or um, acrobatics check. And again, not too hard. We'll say you just have to get an eight. Yeah, I got a 19. Boy, that would have been nice a, a second ago, but okay. All right. And now it is Fizwick's turn. Fizwick wants to just uh, kind of sit and hide behind... Um... Alex, or uh, Drunk Drakbar, and wait for the strike. He wants to see if he can maybe. Fiswick has ro- rode some animals. He wants to see if he can like jump on the back of it, maybe to expose a, a super critical hit. You know. Okay. So he's just gonna kind of sit back and wait for the right time to strike, if that's possible. Mm-hmm. So, um, so you could ready an action. And I guess what uh, what circumstances would make you take the leap? I'm figuring he's going to take a strike. Mm-hmm. It's going to take a strike. And when it strikes, and it's at that moment where it's fully extended, yep. and it's probably going to be eaten clay. And when it... Pronounced clay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and when it takes a snap at him... Or whoever is the first warrior at the front, like it might. I'm I'm standing by Drukvar because I'm expecting him to be the first one to get hit. But okay, so Drukvar actually just leapt to the boat uh, on the top there, and you're still in the other one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm I'm just trying to wait for it to like strike somebody else. Cause sure. I, I... So maybe you're kind of crouched behind Clay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Yep. Um. So now we will go to Clay's turn, and your action is readied. Clay. Oh. Would I know? Does if this thing breathes, can, like can it breathe underwater? Is it like a fish? Yes. Or is it a mammal? It is a reptile. So it does not breathe mm-hmm. underwater. It breathe. It comes up to breathe. Um. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That okay. is correct. Yep. It is a marine um, reptile. Okay. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna use call to the wave and uh, shove water down its throat so it can't breathe. Okay. All right, go um, ahead and do that. That's a con. Con saving throw? Nope, just con spell casting. It's actually shape water. Okay. Uh, which is, there is no saving throw. Okay, it so just, do you just make a, an attack or? I can do whatever I want to, basically. I can make simple shapes and control them gotcha. in, within a five foot cube. Gotcha, okay. Water. So, yeah, I mean, it has its mouth open. Thanks, Baird. And so, well, so that's, I don't know if I need to count my spell cast. I mean, instead of an attack, would I use my spell casting ability, which was an 18? Well, if it just says you can shape the water and it doesn't say there's an attack or a saving throw, then it's just like this is an effect that you can trigger at will. Um, what's it called again? It's, well, it's called Call of the Wave for a water genasi, but. It's using the shape water cantrip, and it says that constitution is my spell casting ability. So I'm not sure if that's what you would use to check instead of a d20 roll for an attack. Let's see here. Hmm. Yeah, I'm actually not sure. I don't, I don't actually see it. I'm searching for call to the wave and I see a Reddit post. So we're just going to go with, uh, I mean, it's, there's nothing fancy about it. It's just a second level shape water. Yeah, it just, okay. I shape just water. looked it yeah, up and it gotcha. just says, you know, you know, it as a cantrip. So I think you can just do it whenever you, 
would like. Okay. Yeah. So in that case, yeah, I mean, I guess you can only could... do it once per long rest, though. Mm hmm. Mm. So, so, um, yep. Um, so you're just going to try to basically move some water from the surface to into the throat of this thing, or does it come from you? No, it, I have to, there has to be a source of water that okay. I use that I control. Yeah. Yeah. But so I'll say, I'm assuming he's like a five foot cube is big enough to like cover his head. Yeah. Yeah. No, I dig it. Um, sure. So he, yeah. So there's, there's just this blast of water over his head. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Anything right, else? It's staying, it's staying there. It's basically suffocating. Him. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Um, no, that would be my action, but I do want to back up. I don't want to be standing on the front of uh -huh. the half-eaten boat. Yep. Do you want to get onto the other boat or? Um, yeah, actually, I will I will jump over to the other boat. Okay. Yep, that sounds good. All right. Uh, oh, so you can go ahead and make a uh, acrobatics or athletics check for me. Easy DC. Oh, not 653. <laughs> what are you rolling? <laughs> it's uh, it's an app. That's why I said oh, I, D1, this is what I rolled, by the way, after I corrected the 653. Okay. It's seven. So you slip into the water um, and go ahead and make an ac or a uh, dexterity saving throw to see if you can grab the side of the boat so only your legs go in. Okay. Um, I can breathe water, by the way. Okay. Um, dexterity. Mm -hmm. um, five. Okay. You are in the water. You still have, you know, maybe your fingers on the edge of the boat, but you are in the water. Fair enough. All right. Um, this creature is, uh, now going to, um, move to attack this other boat. Um, Fizzwick, it is your turn to jump or is it, same boat rather same boat. Fizzwick, you may try to make the leap now if you would like to. Yeah. I want to try to right when it's getting that, that strike on the boat, see if I can jump on the back of it. And... Okay. Yep. Um, go ahead and let's say you have to get a dexterity, um, yep, acrobatics could work and the DC is going to be a, a 13. Acrobatics? Yep. Thirteen. You got it. <laughs> you are on this thing's back. Um, <laughs> And it is now lunging forward to attack the boat. And it is going to hit four. That is going to be 15 damage to that boat. So it is now starting to splinter in several places. Big time. All right. And... Um, it is, oh, you know what? I, I was supposed to roll with disadvantage. I was going to roll with disadvantage because of Ryan's spell. Yeah, still okay, though. Okay, so still hits it. Um, and now it is going to be uh, Druckvar's turn. So Druckvar, this, this uh, creature has just taken a chunk out of the boat. It still has just like this face full of water, essentially. And... Um, and physics on its has back? just leapt onto its back. What would you like okay. to do? Yeah, by the way, I also like I had to took a screenshot of it. <laughs> didn't I have to roll, roll didn't I have to roll exactly a 13? Yep. So yeah. I just want to see legit did it. <laughs> you are riding a plesiosaurus. <laughs> um am I within five feet of this creature at this point? I would say or is no, it farther you're away. Probably um yeah, if you're you're in this boat right here now, so yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to try for another guiding bolt attack. Okay. Yeah. That's a ranged for it. attack. I'm going to roll for that. Is it good? That's going to elect. No, you're not electrocute me. 
Seven. That's okay. my attack roll. Yeah, you missed, unfortunately. Brutal. Oh, you right. know what? No, roll with advantage for uh, the effect of this water. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. I'll give you another shot so you get here. Is is guiding bolt considered electric? Yeah. No, I don't, I don't no, it's it ra is, it's no. it's radiant. It's radiant. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, twenty two. Okay, that definitely hits. Go ahead and roll your damage. Okay, fifteen. That's four. That's four d six. It comes to fifteen. All right. Um. Very good. And uh, also, since that that was a hit. Uh, the next attack roll made against the target before the end of my next turn has advantage. But I guess they already would because of the effect that uh, play yeah. generated. Okay, yeah. cool. All right. Uh, and now it is uh, Fizzwick's turn. Fizzwick, you are on the back of the Plesiosaurus. What would you like to do? Awesome. <laughs> Fizzwick has a sword as well, short sword. And he wants to try to take out that sword and just bury it into the brain of this thing. Okay. Go ahead and make your attack roll with your short sword. That brain is covered in two and a half feet of water, just so you know. Let's see. Uh, Seventeen. All right, that is a hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. I say he has a rapier, not a short sword. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, eight. All right. Eight damage. So, yeah, you don't quite get up to its head. It's a little bit too far up the long neck, but you stab into its neck with your rapier, and it writhes a little bit as you do so. All right. And that you said that was eight damage? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Uh, we are up to... Um, I think it is Clay's turn. Clay, mm -hmm. you see Fizzwick on the back, just stabbed it in the neck. He's just gotten hit with a guiding bolt, and you are uh, kind of holding this water cube over its head. I actually don't have to hold it. It stays for an hour Okay. as I cast it, after I cast it. Cool. So, um, But I am in the water, so I am going to actually... Nope, I'm not. I forgot about gonna, that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah. What I mean is, I'm warm and toasty, back at home. <laughs> um, Over on that ice floe by our fire. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I don't know what you guys are doing. Um, no, I'm gonna pull myself back up into the boat, uh, if I may. Yeah, you may try that and go ahead and you know what. You're, I'm just going to say that's not too hard to do, especially as Drukvar is in the boat right now, giving a little counterweight for it. So, yes, you managed to do so. Uh, I'll okay. say that's your action. And um, you can still... Uh, we'll just say that's your move, and you can still try to do an action. Okay, just then I would like to uh, grab the paddle as I come up. I'm going to grab one of the paddles and stand up and turn around and just swing it at the, uh, the beast's head. Okay. If I can reach. Yeah, I'll say it has just chomped down onto this boat, and so you just kind of whack. Um, mm -hmm. Yep, and go ahead and roll. Let's see. Uh, we'll treat this kind of like a club, essentially, um, and you can just make your normal attack. We'll say it's 1d6 damage for an ore. Uh, just a straight 1d20, though? Yep, for your normal attack, as you would with a strength-based weapon. 16. Okay, 16 is a hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. We'll say it's 1d6 plus your um, strength modifier. Nine. All right. The big paddle. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, yeah, it's this thing has taken a beating. Um, let's see. Math is difficult. Give me a moment. Okay. It is hurting, but it is still kind of writhing around. And it is actually going to, um, uh, basically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use its turn to try to, uh, I'm not sure exactly how shape water works, so feel free to you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, um, Ryan. But I'm going to say it is just going to try to like, uh, point, actually. Point of, 
point of order before you do that. Yeah. I have two weapon fighting. Does that is that uh oh no, that would be just two handed, right? Yeah, so you could um that makes you more effective with two weapons. But I okay. don't think it can be like, I, I would say an ore is like a two-handed weapon, basically. You know what I mean? Okay. Got it. So, yeah. Um, all right. So, let's change the full water direct. This movement does not. Okay, I'm just reading about shape water here. Um, it says it doesn't have the force to cause damage, but you cause shapes. Yeah. Um, and actually, as I'm reading about this, the plesiosaur has the ability to hold its breath for one hour. So I'm not Even sure. Caught off guard? What's that? Even caught off guard? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it would be, um, you know, it, it took its disadvantage. And now I think it's kind of like, yeah, okay. That shocked me. I mean, me it lives in the water. I can see but, where it's. <laughs> yeah. But um, but it's it's not that will cease to have an effect, I guess, you know, or it shakes it off and the water goes flying or something. Um, so and I'm going to say it is going to now use its turn to go under the water and it is going to. Uh, so Fizwick is left floating there and no Fizwick, you can choose to hold on if you want to go underwater with it. What would Fizwick do as this thing goes? Whoo. Who's next uh, to strike? Can, can I can I say something too? Can I say something too? Yeah. Uh, that that uh, spell that I used against it means that it's still glowing, so we could see it where it's going. Great point. Yeah. So, Fizwick, would you try to hold on as it goes under the water? Um. Who who whose turn is next? Um, it would be Druckvar's next. But basically, I'm just giving you this as a possible reaction. No, uh, he's going to try to jump back into the boat as it goes back under. Okay. And as he does so, I'm going to let you, I'm going to give you a chance to do that, but it's going to be hard. It's going to be a DC 20 to, to, uh, uh, acrobatics to jump back in the boat. <laughs> I have a plus seven, so maybe it's, it's, it's possible. Off. Fizwick is a spry little fellow. Yeah. He's really, <laughs> his animal handling in acrobatics is. All right. High. So go ahead and roll your uh, acrobatics. Fourteen. Okay. Roll yeah. One. Roll the one. Okay. Wait. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. How would you, I don't know how you would roll a one. That would be an eight, then, right? The seven plus seven. Oh, I mean, oh no! So I rolled a seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you managed to kind of like you know grab an arm onto the side of the boat but other than that you are in the water and the uh, plesiosaur is going to try to tip the second boat now that i believe clay, clay are you in the boat with Druckvar? yeah okay cool. so you guys go ahead and make a strength check you need to get an average we'll say of a uh I think it's a 12, but let me check here. Yep, average of a 12 between the two of I mean, you. 20. Six, 16. Okay, so yeah, you guys managed to kind of brace this boat against the other one. Maybe one of you has an oar against the ice flow next to you, just kind of steadying it as it tips. And um, it, it goes up, and then whew, um, you can see the lit up plesiosaurus uh, moving away rapidly uh, from your two boats. Um, okay. What would you like to do? Uh, can I reach down and grab uh, Fizwick and pull him back into the boat? Sure. Yep. And we are now out of initiative order. Um, well, I guess we don't necessarily have to be, but you can see that it has moved. Uh, let's see what its speed is here. Uh, 40 feet. So it is now, and you can see it well lit because of Alex's uh, guiding bolt. Sorry, let me find, there we go. Um, so, yep, so it is right about there, but it is under the water. Um, is there, uh, can I take an, can I take an action? Yeah. So actually then if we will go, we will stay in our initiative order. Fizwick is still okay. in the water and it is Druckvar's turn. Okay. Um, I'm going to fire a crossbow bolt at it. Okay. Yeah, go for it. It's well within range. 
water does <laughs> I got that... a total of seven, so I okay. don't think so. Yeah, no, it's not going to hit. Okay. Um, and next up we have Fizwick. What would you like to do? Uh, I guess I got to climb back in the boat. Would that take up my action? Yeah, so that could take your move, and then I would still give you an action if you'd like. I can attack? Sure. Um, or no, I, it's under the water, right? Yeah. Um, after watching that uh, comical display of Druckvar trying to shoot his shoot, shoot it in the water, Fizwick second guesses his, his arrow and puts it back in the quiver. So he was about to make the same choice. Um, Fizwick's going to wait again. He's going to get back, back behind Druckvar, kind of brace himself and just wait for the, the best opportunity. Okay. Yeah. He knows he can get one shotted right now with that seven hit points so he's <laughs> <laughs> he's beefy man all right clay it is your turn um the plesiosaurus is moving rapidly away from you fizzwick is dripping wet and shivering violently you probably are too a little bit but anyway what would you like um to yeah i mean um if if the beast is retreating I I would do nothing um, except except say um, don't forget to write everything down. <laughs> oh, that that's to us the party. What? Who is that to? Who is that directing no, to? We have to, to keep, we have to keep a record of what we see about. Yeah, the I know. Okay. Take notes, so if you can tell the lady back to the shore what we saw. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to keep the description of the beast in my mind but right now we should head back to shore yeah <laughs> um i feel like right now two and a half fish is probably sufficient <laughs> that's a good that's a good 12 copper um the um the plesiosaurus disappears from sight and um the uh how long does guiding bolt last like is there just this glowing beast in the lake it, for it, it says time? it lasts until the until my next turn so now it's done oh okay okay yeah so um and yeah technically alex because it had guiding bolts um Oh, no, it was your turn. So, yeah, I was going to say, oh, you should have had advantage, but maybe it canceled out by the fact that it's underwater. So, anyway, uh, we're good. I, right. I would have advantage. You know what? Just speculatively, I'm going okay, to roll, sure. roll again. Just, just to see. Just sure. to see. We'll say its back was just a little bit above the skin. 25. Of the water. 17. Okay. Ooh. So, sure, a bolt sticks into its back, and it you see this kind of like, uh smooth swimming away just for a moment just <laughs> and it, it keeps it, on it swimming. would have been it would have been three points of damage if that counted <laughs> yeah um you hear in had, the distance oh come on <laughs> it had quite a few hit points left but it was taking a beating and mm -hmm. not willing to pay this price to try to sink two boats no um all right so, Clay and Fizwick, go ahead and make a constitution saving throw for me, if you would. DC 10. 25. 16. All right. So, you are shivering, but um, you manage to avoid any further damage damage from the the cold that is racking your body i um, take my coat off to to keep the cold water away from my skin okay yeah cool and if you uh, what would you guys like to do at this point are you interested in heading back to the docks um, yeah i mean uh, yeah is, is our fire is our fire still going on that ice flow you know it's probably still some coals there there's a six foot deep melted hole. In there. <laughs> I, mean, I don't see why we want to stay here. I, we got our information about the sea monster. We got our fish. We need to leave. I'm cold. Mm -hmm. but I if, think we'll get more from. But, but, but with your, but you might, you may want to warm up before we head back. Uh, don't you think? Is my blanket snuggy enough? 
Um, I would say with your blanket, I would give you advantage on the constitution saving throws that you'll have to make. About would we know how far away of from them before you get back to the dock? Yeah. Okay, I was just gonna say, would we know how far away we are from the the next warm hearth? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say um, maybe about forty minutes or so. Um, uh, from the dock, which is going to be the nearest warm hearth. And, um, the, um, and I would, I, I'm just going to say for, for the, the heck of it, let you'd have to make like, well, let's just say eight con saving throws <laughs> or face one level of exhaustion, uh, for each failed save. If you don't do something to address it, if you just decide we're, we're heading back. I mean, exhaustion so goes away after a long rest though. Right. right, but there are levels of exhaustion that could lead to, uh, is it death? Levels of exhaustion. Don't we have a spare boat and look more driftwood that we could make a fire with? Well, we could we could throw some more torches in there. Yep, you do have more torches. Like if we if we just start another fire, can, could we get myself warm? Could, I, we... could we light a torch and just have uh, Druckbar hold it while I row back? Yeah, I'm pretty small, like a torch, like. <laughs> I'm gonna light a torch, I'm gonna stick it in Fizzwick's shirt. So yeah. here's the deal. Um, yeah, exhaustion can lead to death, but it takes six failed saving throws, so. Um, but. I'd say we make for the shore. Okay. But also, is, isn't that the situation with exhaustion that like, if you were to, to level six exhaustion, you can't shake that after like one long rest, can you? Or is that the way it works, you can't? Um, you can actually, if it says, it says here that <clears throat> you're, well, no, you're right. Um, let me see here at four, at level four, your hit point maximum is halved. Um, but is that permanent? I don't think so. I thought you lose finishing one. long rest reduces a creature's exhaustion level by one. That's oh. what I was thinking. Yeah. So it could, it could potentially take you guys like a full, even if you survive this, you could take a full week to get back up to snuff. Yes, that is true. My votes to restart that fire. If we make him row and he warms himself up by all the work. <laughs> with the blanket, that could, I mean, hey. Does that work? I'm, I'm actually wondering about that, if that works with hypothermia, if that helps you. If you just like run full, full blast, like, like you're in a marathon. If you're not too far down the hypothermic spectrum, yeah, it would help. Yeah, I honestly don't still know. remember we, it. If we, you we were know, far enough, if you were far enough down where your organs started to shut down, you you're in trouble. We know the fire works. We know the fire works. Let's head back to the flow and restart it. Yeah, there's got to be like embers left. I mean, we haven't only yep. been fighting this thing for so long, and wouldn't it be hard. All right. So you guys manage to get back here. Uh, you do start the fire, and uh, it is uh, providing enough meager warmth to dry you off after an hour or so, dry you off enough um, that you will uh, not suffer the consequences anymore. Um, in that time, I, mean, I will have you guys go ahead and make one more con saving throw, um, as it does take some time. Just try to shake off the effects of this cold. The DC is 10. 16. 16. All right. You guys are good. Um, you warm yourselves by the fire, pack back into the boats, and you head back for the docks. On your way back, uh, I'm going to have one person per boat make a DC 15 survival. And let's make sure I'm Can getting that actually... right here to avoid the ice flows. Is the other boat actually rowable? It is. It's it's not not sunk yet. They don't sink till they hit. Uh, I think it's zero hit points. Is like when it's sunk. So okay. yeah. Otherwise, I, I was wondering if maybe we should just lash it to the other boat and then just row the one boat. Yeah, you could lash it to the back, kind of with the rope and and kind of a tow situation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. All right, so you guys do that. We are down to three and... oars, probably. Yeah. All right. So then go ahead and one of you, please, make a um, survival uh, check. And 
Let me just um, see where that. Who's going to do that? Who, who's going to do? I can do it. Okay. Uh, Are you going to row, or I can row? I'm making the survival check. Okay. DC 22. 22? Yep. Okay. Yep, you're good. You um, steer around um, an ice flow, and then we'll do one more of those checks. And um, same thing as you navigate around this cluster, another cluster appears up ahead. Okay, here's another one. Nine. Okay. So yeah, you are going to take uh, a little bit of damage there on a failed check. One d six. Probably be my bonus, damage. which is down to forty eight already. Okay, so that is going to be six damage. So, Bad. you so know, <laughs> a small chunk of wood. Okay. Nothing major though. Whew. All right. All right. You guys uh, see no one on the docks, um, but huddled up against a building, you do see a couple people. Uh, chattering, um, and uh, they seem to be drinking out of a bottle. They're passing back and forth between them. Um, what would you guys like to do as you dismount the boats here and kind of tie them up to the dock? Um, how far is it from the dock to, uh, what was it, the five taverns or something? Yeah, the... Um, Where we got the dock. Five tavern center, yes. Um, it is just about, um, I mean, it's like two minutes walk. It's nothing. Okay. Very small town. I would just as soon walk back and uh, take care of business. Okay. All right. I agree. Yep. So uh, let me get rid of this and this here. Um, so you guys manage to um, make your way back um, to Five Tavern Center, and you see um, the black bearded brother <laughs> uh entering the establishment you can hear grinsk from outside hollering at someone um you know slamming his mug of ale and um but before you do that um you do see tally um walking very briskly uh from one of the other taverns saying oh oh here here you sir you survived. I mean, n not that I'm surprised. Um, I actually, I hold up a forestalling hand and I walk in to find Grinsk. Yeah. And I say, you owe us 12 coppers and we're going to call it even. And I like hold my ax up under his chin. Do you, who has the fish? Okay. They're Who's holding the, the fish that we can toss to him? They're in the boats. They're pretty big. You don't, right? Oh, like, yeah. That's, that's right. They're like 60 pounds. Okay, never mind. Yeah, they're probably pretty big. Um in his face yeah so uh clay go ahead and make an intimidation check for me eleven all right he kind of well let me let me just roll for him here yeah he says all right right <laughs> listen uh you got some fish then I assume we did. They're about the same size as the hole in the front of your other boat. I, uh, well, then that sort of nigga. No, uh, we're even. Right, right. Uh, of course, um, Copper, uh, uh, pulls out a pouch from, uh, in, inside his tunic and. Uh, uh, there you go. Thank you very much. I'll uh, be right, right out there to check. I don't out say anything. Pouch. I just turn around and walk away. <laughs> All right. Um, Fizwick and Druckvar, did you follow Clay in, or are you staying outside to talk to Tally? What's going on? Uh, stay outside to talk to Tally. And I, yeah. I, uh, I say to Tally, um, can you hand me your notepad? Um, I gave you a notepad. Did you? You didn't lose my notepad, did you? Oh, so sorry. I'm so forgetful. And I withdraw it from my pack. And uh, say, well, then can I borrow something to write with? I, I gave you something to write with. You didn't lose that, did you? Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. And I reach back to my pack and I fish it, fish out a piece of um, charcoal or whatever the uh -huh. uh, element is. 
Yes. And I place the notepad up against the side of the um, tavern, and I draw uh, the simple shape of a plesiosaur with the long neck, the four fins, and the tail. And then I I demarcate some really simple um, uh, sort of labels showing like how how big it is, how how long it is, and uh, and then I hand it back to her, and I said, the one thing I didn't include here is that it speaks. I. Uh, Stinks, man. It really fucking stinks. It stinks and it speaks. <laughs> okay. Fascinating. Oh. I wonder if this could be the work of a druid in the area. Um, yes. Strange things. These uh, awakened beasts. Yes. Um, Awakened, you say. Remarkable. Remarkable. Uh, do any of you speak Elvish? No. Okay, yeah, you kind of hear her talking and... Hmm. Oh. Oh, well, um, thank you very much for this. I... Uh, just... Um, let, let's go inside here. It's, let, get out of the cold. She's, like, visibly shivering. And, okay. um... Wants to go into the uh, the uh, bearded brother, I believe. What was it called again? Black be black bearded, bearded brother. Black bearded brother. There we go. Yeah. Which begs the question: What color were the other brothers' beards? <laughs> yeah, someone put in the chat: the wet paper freezes to the side of the tavern. Yeah, you guys are standing <laughs> out here in the cold. It is, it is freaking cold out here. It's like you know, negative it's twenty right. degrees right Carried now. Carried a lick the side yeah. of the building. The book says highs around negative forty. But okay. I, anyway, it's negative 20, we'll say. So, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> she hurries inside and very, uh, she looks at the paper more closely and, oh, wow. Yes. Remarkable. Um, okay. Uh, and she hands you a little pouch and says, thank you so much. Accept this as a token of my appreciation. A little pouch containing five gold pieces. And she also says, I've got something else for you since you seem to have discovered away with animals perhaps this would help and she hands Fizwick a little scroll um and this is a scroll of animal friendship um this might nice. come in handy in the wilds of icewind dale oh thanks off lady hmm. he just takes it and stuffs it away mm -hmm. and um um grinsk asks you to follow him to the dock um, to uh, just uh, have a look at the fish. Um, do you oblige? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Fizwick, was that a yes? Yeah. Okay. Clay, do you oblige? Or where? Are, what are you doing, Clay? Oh, I came back out to listen to the conversation. Okay. So now they're back in the tavern, and um, and Grinsk asks. Uh, please come to the dock with me. Let's let's check out these fine fish you got. Okay. Sure enough, let's go. Yeah. Okay. As we head out, I grab uh, or I I kind of pulled. Uh, what's your name, Alex? Tally or <laughs> Drakvar. Tally? Drakvar. Pull Drakvar aside and give him four coppers. Okay. Nice. Put the rest in my pocket. I give, I give two gold pieces to you clay and i give one to fizzwick and keep two for myself man fizzwick is getting shat up man i jumped on that thing dude i and i got shafted I, this isn't fair i don't know if fizzwick knows that i ha i have four, five gold pieces in that little pouch hmm fair enough i'm the one here sitting there stinking now that one piece <laughs> um I'll, I'll catch you on the flip side Actually, <laughs> flick him a coin. <laughs> hey, no, uh, actually, knowing that he got shafted on the gold, I actually do give him his four copper as well. Okay. Very good. Uh, uh, that's so kind of him. The, as you march back to the dock, uh, the cold wind is biting, the dark... Um, you see a, a couple people on the shore uh, with torches looking out into the water. 
and you see them very quickly run to run to the end of the dock. Um, uh, Tally is following close behind you as well, and she says, oh, "What's all the commotion out here?" And as you run out, um, Grinsk seems to forget his own boats and the fish. Uh, there is a, a figure uh, floating um, on just clinging to this scrap of wood and floating to shore. And um, it's a, uh, about 10 feet out from the dock now. And you see one of these people grabbing an oar and pulling in closer. And you hear, a beast! <laughs> a beast! <sighs> and this person collapses. You look, and there's this person looks frozen solid. Um, strange, grayish, purplish, bluish skin. And um, they hoist the figure up onto the dock and uh, out cold. Um, what would you guys like to do? Um, where, how many people are out there with us? Just a few? Um, yeah, I would say there's uh, two people plus Grinsk plus Tally. Okay. So I, I guess I would say let's get this man by a fire. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I go over and I help, you know, either care, I guess, carry him if he's completely unconscious. Um, sure. Maybe back inside. Yeah, I mean, you are definitely the, the biggest, strongest one here. Right. Um, and so w maybe with the help of a couple of these others, help hoist you onto his shoulders. And um, you can feel the you know, shivering of this unconscious body somehow still as you march back uh, to Five Tavern Center. Well, yo, Fizzwick, bring your blanket. Fizzwick grabs the blanket and just kind of scurries off with it like it's like a cape over him. <laughs> Wait, so you don't bring it? You, like... No, I, I brought it. Oh, okay. I thought you meant <laughs> like, like, put it on and took he's off. Scurrying, it. He's scurrying towards you, not scurrying away. Oh, yeah. I am bring after you. Druckfar, um walks up to Clay and reaches up and checks the pulse of this figure. Mm. There is a pulse. You can feel it, uh, but it is weak. Okay. And as you um, march back to the tavern, uh, the snow starts to fall heavy over the town of Bremen. Um, and that is where we are going to end this session. Okay. Huh. Wow. All right. Guys, thank you so much for playing. Um, more, many more adventures in the 10 towns ahead. Um, you guys can level up to level two for next session. And we are going to be playing everyone in two weeks uh, from today. So that is the 19th of October. And we hope you can join us. And thank you so much for joining us for this one. Um, we had consistently about, you know, 50 to 70 viewers. So that was pretty awesome for my first stream on this channel. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed themselves. And, uh, again, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you guys check out uh, links to this, these guys' stuff down in the video description. And... Um, yeah, anything else you guys would like to say before we sign off? Nope, it's been it was a blast. Yeah, it was awesome. Cool. Very cool. And next awesome. time we will uh, enfold this uh, unconscious uh, frozen body into the into the party as well, as Michael will be uh, taking up his character's mantle. Um, so yeah, uh, gonna, is he gonna stay frozen? Like, can we weekend at Bernie's? It. <laughs> yeah. I think Very that might be fun. Lots of performance checks from Michael. <laughs> How well can you play a live person? <laughs> uh, cool. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Um, and uh, yeah, make sure you're subscribed and all that good stuff. And adios.